He's a sender. This dude <laughs> can set. <laughs> Can't wait to get this video, guys. Done. It's done. It's just how tall are you? Six six. What's up, guys? Today we're gonna be doing a review of the Santa Cruz Mega Tower. This is a bike I've been wanting to review for some time now. Everybody has so much amazing stuff to say about it, and my buddy Alex over here stepped up and was like, "Dude, I would totally let you use my bike for video." And I was just like, "Wow, that's pretty awesome." How you doing, Alex? Pretty he's, good. He's a sender. This dude <laughs> can send. Like, nah. he makes sending look like. How, just, does, how do you make it look? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just writing it. Uh, <laughs> I just listen to my SpongeBob soundtrack and that's about it. I think what I'm trying to say is he's a really good writer. So if anyone could tell us about the Mega Tower and its performance, it's definitely him. All right, man. So how long have you owned this guy? I've had it for like uh, five weeks now. Uh, before this one, I had a uh, Nintendo Spider, which is more like a trail bike. Uh, it's like a, it was like 140, 130, I think. I mean, I liked it, but uh, then my mechanic kind of like a uh, got mad at me because I was like, kinda, like sh shredding it too hard and like pushing it too far. So that's when I decided to get a mega tower because it's like a sender. So like when I got it, it felt kind of like weird because it's like a 29er. And I was just like used to like the 27 and 5, just like playful kind of vibe. Uh, so at first it was kind of like hard getting used to it, but like once you get used to it, it just like bombs through everything. It's so fast. Uh, and I got pretty lucky because I got it with a qual shock and it's like super sensitive. It's like amazing traction. Yeah, I just love this thing. It's a freaking beast. He just wants to ride right faster and faster. All right, so we're going to get the bike, load it on the trailer, and get out to the trail. So let's uh, fix it all up and let's go. And if anybody's wondering, I always get comments in the comment section about, hey, what kind of rack was that? It's a 1UP USA bike rack. And if you want to leave a comment, do it anyway because that helps the video. So I don't want to discourage comments because I love comments. They're great. Leave a comment. All right, man. Well, I'm going to get on get this video done and we'll be yeah, back. And, I'll, and I'll, take, I'll take good care of her. <laughs> <laughs> guys so it is a sunny day today i totally forgot my glasses i'm like dying right now with the sun beaming down my eyes so forgive me for that but all right guys so today i'm going to get out on this bike i'm actually going to probably be meeting my friend julian we'll see if he shows up i don't know i think i'm more than likely i believe julian will be showing up from tall man on bike and because he has a santa cruz mega tower as well so a lot of times you guys tell me like you know it's kind of nice to get a review like a long-term review from somebody and unfortunately i'm just unable to give a long-term review because i'm unable to hold these bikes for that long so but julian will be here today and he's had the bike for about two years so i'll be able to kind of share with he'll be able to kind of share with you his thoughts and everything from like the long-term perspective and i'm going to give you the initial perspective if he shows up I'm hoping he does because that would be really epic so i'm going to get all suited up right now we're going to get out on the trail and i'm going to kind of warm up and do all that stuff and i'll have gimbal footage and do all that and we'll discuss and talk about it and hopefully we'll see julian soon guys so can't wait to get this video guys done get it done all right everyone so julian decided to actually come and the reason why he's called tall man on bike because you know check this out it's just how tall are you six six he's six six <laughs> i'm five six he's literally a foot taller than me so that's what's going on here so, but no, he decided to show up today and he rides the Mega Tower as well. So since like he already owns the Mega Tower, like I wanted to give you guys a perspective of he's had it for a while about and a year. about a year, right? Yeah. So how many other bikes did you ride before you decided to make your choice? on this Um, one? the first bike I had was a Cannondale Habit. Uh, so I went from like a cross country 120 travel front and back to an Enduro bike. So going from 27.5 to 29 <laughs> has been, uh, <laughs> No, no, come back, come oh, back. Come on, who cares? Let's just keep going. <laughs> so going from a 27.5 trail bike to a 29er enduro bike is literally like night and day. So okay. um, from the downhills to the uphills, jumping, everything feels completely different. Um, in a good way, though. The Mega Tower is probably the best thing I've ridden so far. So people always talk about like 27.5 versus 29er. Like, how, like, 
did you what did you notice that was the biggest difference between the two wheel sizes um so kind of like the main main difference between the two uh 29 is gonna have faster roll speed you're gonna be able to carry more uh speed down hills over rocks stuff like that 27.5 is gonna be a little more playful it's gonna feel a little more you know uh, nimble on the trails uh but i think the the first day i rode my mega tower was at mac you know and it was just you know kind of small trail nothing too too gnarly and i noticed right off the bat just climbing it uh that 29er you feel like you're almost floating over over obstacles so that was kind of a, a selling point for me yeah because i ride the yeti sb45 and i kind of feel like that is a great bike for i like the 29er i love the wheel size on i like how i can get you know i can go through you know the technical stuff if you will you know, I could pop it really easy. I can get up things like, I, I don't know. I just, and then going downhill, if there's like an obstacle, I, you know, you could roll it, you could do whatever, and it's mm -hmm. still going to work out like it. And you can, you carry more speed. I feel like, um, now one of the things I noticed, um, kind of like riding this bike in comparison to my, uh, Yeti is that you can actually berm in the corner way easier than my Yeti. Yeah. Like, I feel like the Yeti is like this wide, like it's so wide and it's hard to really just get it to fit in that berm and just shoot you out. Whereas like this one was just, it, it like, I could dunk it. I, I just felt like so intuitive and felt so in control it's a little smaller. In, inside the berm. Yeah. And, but however, so far I feel like my bike is faster on the straightaway. You know, because it's longer. Yeah. You know, maybe that's because it's longer, it's more stabler. So those are like the first initial things I'm starting to feel. But um, let's uh, let's get out and do well, some riding on them. Yeah, let's get out, do some riding on them. And first, though, I want to show you guys some of the highlights of his bike because he has done some work to kind of show you guys what you guys could maybe potential ideas for you guys too. All right, guys, I just want to let you guys know that my buddy Julian has a YouTube channel, and that's why I call him Tall Man on Bike because he has a YouTube channel. And since he's had the bike for so long, guys, he's going to be active in the comment section when this video posts live. So if you guys have any long term questions for him and how, like, you know, long term um, experience with certain things, Ask him a question in my comment section and he'll respond to you guys. And then also subscribe to his channel because he has some good stuff on there. I really enjoy a lot about what he's doing. He's races a race circuit around here in San Antonio. So it's, he has some really cool stuff on there. I before I came out here and I was like, no, I gotta come. I gotta get some, uh, some shout outs from Tony. All right. Yeah, I know you almost didn't come. I was like, I even said in this video, I'm like, I don't even know if he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. All right, let me know when you're ready. All right, man. So right, let so. us know what some of the work that you've done on this guy. All right, guys. So this is my Mega Tower, uh, Peppermint Patty, as I've dubbed it. Um, I've changed uh, a few things on the bike, so let me show you. So first thing is the contact points. I got Ergon GE1 factory um, grips. The Ergon SM Pro Men saddle with the nice... Uh, taint channel as I call it. it it takes a lot of um pressure off your perineum also let's see uh going from there we still got the stock fork but i've added a cool little fender to it you know why not um put a cool fid lock bottle if you don't know about fid lock bottles guys um they may look you know well those are magnetic they're not going to stick on there i've literally taken off uh 12 foot drops of this thing and it stays on doesn't come off uh, let's go to the drivetrain now. I have swapped out. Uh, when I got this bike, it was the S build. So that comes with the GX drivetrain. I've kind of upped it up. Uh, we're going now with the SRAM XX1 Access. I've also put the uh, gold XX1 uh, cassette chain on there. Um, if you're not familiar with Access, uh, it's probably one of the best upgrades you could do uh, from a racer standpoint. Um, shifting under pressure, jumping gears, like nothing. It's pretty awesome. Um, I got a i9 uh, hub on there, got the torch, and then finish it off with some St. Downhill pedals. We have also added a Renthal bar and stem. Um, it has a nice BMX kind of dirt jumpy feel to it, uh, and I like, the, I like the look, so yeah. Oh, and I got a, uh, since I'm tall, I got a 210. It's probably the longest travel dropper on the market at the moment. So yeah, that's the only way I can get my seat up and down for my, my height. So it works out pretty good for me. So when you're talking about your access, you're talking about you have an electronic drivetrain that doesn't operate off, you have to charge it, right? It doesn't operate yeah, off so, of the cable. Um, the battery lasts, I think it's like 30 hours. Don't quote me on that. Or maybe that's the, the battery in here, but um, you know, I charge maybe every other month and I don't really think about it. Um, it hasn't seemed to be a problem. And I think the battery and the shifter is like 30,000 hours or something crazy like that. So um, don't quote me on that again, guys. I'm not sure. Uh, go ahead and look at the, the description down there. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, 
the, um, it works out really well. I, I, I mostly got it for racing. Uh, I read that, you know, you can go into a flat current corner and be in the last gear and jump four gears up and then speed on out. And it's done just that um, incredible, incredible technology that they're coming out these days. I highly recommend getting your hands on some Shrem Access and trying it out. All right, so we're gonna just go down the main line. This is the first time we're gonna get a feel for the Mega Tower going down like an enduro style trail. Let's Mega Tower. Let's Mega Tower, bro. It's like, it breaks off of this line. That was so fun. <laughs> so one of the things I noticed that's different from my bike is that it's way more nimble in the corners. Like I could definitely berm a lot better, way more control in the corner. Um, that's kind of exciting and kind of a bummer. I think I'll be missing that when I get like on my Yeti again. Yeah. But the thing that I feel like that I that my Yeti has is I feel like I, I can get faster on it quicker. It's like out of the berms I can go, get faster, but in the berms I'm slower. Now you know that may I mean? be because you're not used to a coil shock as well so okay. there's a big difference in compression when it comes to coil and air so that might be okay. a factor in there as well but i think if you actually were to point this on like a real big hill like spider mountain or something uh -huh. you'd see how how fast and how capable this bike is especially at the speeds because it just really wants to be uh, pointed down uh down a hill and just let it go it's kind of what it is it's a point and shoot kind of deal so what i mean yeah because I, I this is my first time riding a coil i've never ridden a coil before so that's completely new to me so like, what is like, what do you think? Like, what's the difference between a coil so and a coil and everything? I think the, the main difference is in a coil, at least from what uh, my understanding is in an air uh, tune shock. So I think with the air, you have a little more customization, a little more uh, mm -hmm. tunability. Uh, the coil, you know, the, the spring is gonna be rated for, you know, certain weight. So if you wanna go and change out some stuff, you're gonna have to change out the coil, uh, the spring itself. Um, when I rode a mega tower with the coil, it felt like when I went to do any bug kind of like jumping or anything and that it was going to keep just sagging down and like, like i said i guess it's just something i'm not used to yet so mm -hmm. that's something i also want to try out is kind of play with this bike a little more with the with the coil as well so um yeah i think uh it's cool that you can run both both type of systems on this bike and i'm glad to see that you were able to fit a water bottle cage on there oh yeah because i was like thinking i'm like oh no i can never ride this bike because there's no water bottle cage and you seem to have fit one just fine granted yours isn't an extra large uh double xl actually so, but that being said you could probably find like you probably could fit a small fit lock on there or just a smaller okay. uh, bottle in the bottle cage on there and i think it would work so i think you have less bottle clearance on the medium because i'm riding a medium you're riding a large double extra. double double extra large so he's riding a double extra so that's a big difference um now the biggest thing that i like about this bike over my yeti sb130 is that i feel like the reach isn't as far I feel like the reach is like it's the I feel like the I can, cockpit side. Yeah, I feel like I can get over the uh the handlebars a little bit easier than I can my Yeti. And my Yeti has a slam stem. This stem isn't slam. You know, this I have a 30 on mine. This is probably like what? I don't know. Like what does that look like? It's like 30, 35. Some of the length of the stem? Yeah, because I feel like mine's just slightly smaller than this. Like mine is literally up against the, the what do you call oh, it? Oh, okay, I got you. You know. Um, so that's the one fork. of the big things that I like about this bike. I remember when I rode the A Yeti SB130, the 27.5 Yeti, I felt like 
how awesome and nimble that bike was, but I still like the benefits that I got out of mine. Actually, in a weird way, I feel like this bike is like in between the Yeti SB130 and the Yeti SB140. Like, I feel like it's a 29er, but you can get happy on it. Yeah, it doesn't you pedal will. like a 29er. It doesn't ride like it rides like a like a BMX bike almost per se. Yeah, I feel like this bike is definitely more nimble and agile like a 27.5 than my 29er, which feels kind of like longer like in like a monster truck, if you will. And that's the, the VPP suspension. They did a really awesome design. So um, you still got that awesome travel, but you really have that good small bunk compliance when you just want to go on, you know, do some, uh, some pedaling. It climbs really well. Um, I mean, this bike can do it all and you would never think it has 160 uh, mil front and back up travel. So. so it's 160 front, 160 rear. Yep, wow, that is back. insane. Now that I think about that. But it doesn't pedal like that. Yeah, because I, I feel like it's super like nimble and agile, you know, in a sense. I do feel like it's heavier. I do feel that. I feel like it's a heavier bike than mine. My bike definitely feels lighter, but it's definitely way more playful than my Yeti for sure. Oh, yeah. So 